Okay, so yesterday, Google released weights for a new version of one of the Flan models. This was done by Yi Tae on Twitter. He also wrote a very nice blog post going through all of this, talking about what they've released, what the differences are, are and, and the benefits of this as well. So what I thought I would do is just go through and set this up in a collab so have a little play with it and so we can see how well does this stack up against the other models in this flan family and the ul2 family so luckily hugging face has already converted the model to their format so i'm going to be using their format here and i've also put down so i'm going to be loading the model locally here but i've also put down a way that you can access it with the hugging face inference api at the bottom so this Flan 20 billion model, sort of a combination of a couple of different papers and techniques for this. So I'm going to go through some of the key things. So the first ones are that this is using a lot of the same things from the Flan 2 paper, which came out in October last year, but it also incorporates some of the new from the UL2 paper. And that's things to do with different sorts of pre-trainings on mixture of denoises in there. But beyond just that, it also has gone on to add some really cool stuff, like a receptive field that goes out to 2048 tokens. And also this has an unrestrictive license. So unlike a lot of the licenses that are out there at the moment where people have to opt in or request a permission to use via some form or something, Google has just put this out and people can start using it as they want. So this really gives us one of the sort of one of the best examples of a language model that people can run. Now that said, running this is not easy. So you will find that I'm running this on an A100 GPU. I've tried on some of the lower versions and even with the 8-bit inference, it doesn't seem to load on, on lower GPUs. So if you've got two 3090s, you probably can load this model. Um, so I've put in some references about the actual Flan2 paper, the UL2 paper, and also a reference to Yite's blog here about the release. And I'm just going to go through the code that, that I've run and talk a little bit about some of the examples and stuff like that. Like I said, you're going to need a pretty powerful GPU for this, right? So if you've got, a, if you've got access to something like Colab Pro or an NVIDIA V100 or A100 where you've got quite a bit of GPU RAM, you should be able to run this. Unfortunately, even the 8-bit version won't run in things like the Tesla T4, et cetera. Um, perhaps, you know, there'll be sort of versions 4-bit or something like that in the near future that will run for that. So how does this compare? So in the sort of update, they talk a little bit about the comparison to this. And it's really interesting because before this, the model that we've had has been the T5 XXL with 11 billion parameters. And that's been the biggest flan model that we've had access to. So internally, Google has a 62 billion parameter model and a 540 billion parameter model. And you can see this new release here, this 20 billion parameter model, of course is nowhere near as good as the 540 billion one, but it does get pretty close to the 60 billion model for a number of things. And it certainly does better than the T5 XXL 11 billion parameter model for this. So it's one thing to read these numbers. What I thought is I'd go through, look at some of the generations, compare them to the paper and see how things turn out. So loading this in Hugging Face is going to be pretty simple. The main thing that you want to do is load it in 8-bit format. So you can actually load it just in normal FB16. I will show you in a second the sort of the problem with that is that your generation is just going to be really slow. And for me, comparing the, the, the Float 16 and the 8-bit one, actually they seem to be roughly the same outputs and same quality of outputs. So here I'm just bringing in the Flan UL2 model. It takes quite a while to download all the files for this. As you can see, it's quite a big model. And then what I've basically done is just set up a very simple little function to basically tokenize our inputs and then generate from the model and then wrap text so we can look at it. So I mentioned before that first off, I did try doing the non 8-bit version and you'll see that it works just as well. Of course, it worked very well, but the times for generation is really long. So just to generate this answer. So this is one of the questions from the original FLAM paper that answer the following question by reasoning step-by-step. Step. 
cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? The correct answer is nine. And you can see that this model gets it right. And doing the reasoning step by step is actually giving us nice reasoning out. But to get this with the non 8 bit version, the normal version, is taking roughly three and a half minutes to generate. As compared to the exact same thing with the 8 bit version, is getting, it looks to me that this is the same output, but now we're down to under six and a half seconds. Here. You definitely want to use the 8 bit version for this. The cool thing with the Flam 2 paper is it goes through a lot of the different ways of prompting and trying different things out and then shows you the comparisons to this. And most of the examples from the paper are actually using the 540 billion parameter model. You can see here we can try these out with this 20 billion parameter model and see how well they do. So here we've got the one examples for the paper, which is basically asking a question. First off, it asks it without chain of thought prompting. So without asking for the reasoning, and you'll see that you get an answer, and then you ask it for with the chain of thought prompting, and you'll get a longer answer. I've put these in here. Now, the interesting thing is I got different answers from the paper. So the first answer, I'm asking it, can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? And the answer at first is no, which seems like, okay, it got it totally wrong. But when we compare, the interesting part is when we compare with the chain of thought, we can see why it got it wrong. So now we basically use the chain of thought prompting. So just by adding this by reasoning step by step, and you can see the same thing now, rather than just getting the no answer out, we're getting a full breakdown. So haiku is a Japanese poetry that is very short. Haiku is made up of three phrases, five, seven, five syllables respectively. A single tweet is limited to 140 characters. Therefore, the final answer is no. So if you compare this to the paper, they're saying you know, that a single tweet is 280 characters. So it's kind of interesting to look at um, that the sort of logic behind this seems like it could be correct. But for whatever reason, in this version of the model, it thinks that a maximum t tweet size is 140 characters and not 280 or something longer. We can also do things like look at the zero shot logical reasoning. So this is, a, again, a simple example of looking at just a simple question, but then we're asking it to basically give the rationale before answering. So the question here is, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? All right. So the answer back is George Washington died in 799. Jeffrey Hinton was born in 1959. So the answer is no. So the, in this case, the, the answer is correct, but some of its logic is not correct. The, Jeffrey Hinton, I'm pretty sure, was born in 1947. So the date here is off. But it's managed to get two, two of the digits right. And it's interesting to play around with that and see like, okay, could, if you generate it multiple times, well, sometimes it get it right. And I encourage you to go through and change these questions. I've taken everything from the paper or mostly from the paper, but you could try your own questions with this and play around and see. All right. Next one out is the zero shot generation. So this is definitely a hard task for a smaller model that we're now basically just giving it a very small prompt, write a funny poem about a cat driving a car. And we're asking it to, you know, generate quite a long piece of text. So you can see here, it's, it ends up going into a loop, but before it goes into loop, it does you know, have a poem, right? I saw a cat driving a car. He was driving fast. He was driving slow. He was driving in the rain. He was driving in the snow. So the snow rhymes with slow. He was driving in the sun. He was driving in the rain. And then you see, then it goes into this sort of endless loop. So it starts off getting it, but for whatever reason, it's not doing it that well. So this is where playing with the temperature of the model, playing with a number of the other settings on the model, you can maybe get better responses for this. Um, zero shot story writing. Again, another harder task. This time though, we're using a longer prompt here. So remember the example that we're seeing here is from the 540 billion parameter model. Write a sad story about a carrot named Jason. The story should start with the carrot being a professional athlete of some kind and end with the carrot having his heart broken. So it's interesting that the story up here is about this character Jason meeting a beautiful girl and getting his heart broken that way. And this story that it generates here is actually on the same kind of track. It's not as impressive, but we got Jason was a professional carrot. He was a great athlete and he loved to play football. He was a star player on his team. One day he met a girl 
She was a fan of his team. They started dating and they were happy together. One day, Jason found out that his girlfriend was cheating on him. He was heartbroken. So that's clearly done what the prompt was asking. Maybe not as fancy as the 540 billion parameter version, but overall it's done what, what was asked of it. The next version, next one up is the zero shot common sense reasoning. So common sense reasoning is something that we tend to see come in at much bigger model sizes. So I didn't hold a lot of hope for this one to work that well, but its answer I thought was quite funny. So the paper example was I'm riding a bicycle, the pedals are moving fast. I look into the mirror and I'm not moving. Why is this? And the answer is, oh, I'm on a stationary bike. When we prompt the 20 billion model with the same thing, the answer comes back, I'm slacking off. So that's why it's not moving, which I thought was quite funny. Perhaps not the best answer, but certainly an interesting answer there. Another example of this kind of thing would be the zero shot for speech writing. Again, this is from the 540 billion parameter model in the paper. I, and we can see that, okay, the goal here is to basically write an article about the US Open, write a speech from Rafael Nadal to give for his Open and victory. And actually, I haven't passed in an article or anything like that. I've just passed in this particular context. And you can see in the 540 billion one, it writes a speech here. So we don't have that article in there, but what we've got here is it's basically starting to write a speech, right? So it's got Rafael Nadal saying, thank you very much. I'm very happy to win this title. It's a great moment for me. And then it starts to degenerate into this sort of this repetitive thing of where I'm very happy to win this title. Again, this is definitely a harder task for a small model to, to do or for a medium sized model to do. I. Another one that I thought was really interesting though, just the last one to finish up with the sort of testing of the model locally is that we've got this span now of 2048 tokens. So what if we put in something quite long? So here I've just taken an article from yesterday from TechCrunch and I've basically, this is an article all about smart manufacturers at the searching for a way forward. And so I've put that in and then I had a quick look just for a fact that was at the end. So you can see here, it's talking about the one plus CO. So this whole thing is 1674 tokens that we're passing in. So we're asking it, okay, who is the one plus COO? And then give us the output in this first name, surname format. And then we go through it and it's able to generate the output. And th that's pretty impressive that it's been able to get the fact. And I've tried a few different versions of this, of asking where it was, in which city and country, it also got that correct. So I encourage you to try something with a longer token span. It is pretty cool that this is certainly one of the first models that we've been able to easily use with a longer token span. So it's definitely worth playing around with this. If you don't have access to an A100 to be able to run this and you want to run this, I've put down some of the Hugging Face Inference API that you can use for this. And this also allows us to compare quite nicely to the other FLAN T5 models in here as well. So I've set up an inference point here for the FLAN UL2 model, the T5 XXL model, and the T5 large model. So here, if we ask the same question from the UL2 model, you can see we're getting back a very similar kind of answer. If we ask it for, you know, if we ask it for the T5 XXL model, we can see that, okay, the T5 XXL was definitely on the right track with this as well. Both of them have the date wrong. If we go down to the T5 large model, we can see that now it's starting to get a number of facts wrong, right? Now we've, we're like, we've got George Washington died in is different. And we've also got, and now it's saying Jeffrey Hinton was born in 1818. So. It's clearly off in that sense. If we ask it to do the same kind of thing with the, with the various, the other various models here, we can see, okay, if we try the Nadal thing, we can see that it starts off well on the XXL five, but on the T5 large, the T5 large, all we're getting is facts about Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal has won the US Open and he's won the French Open. So it's worked out, oh, okay, Rafa Nadal is the subject here, but it's not actually doing what we're asking for in the prompt. If we ask it for the, the haiku thing, we can see that we, we will get a different response there. So have a play with this yourself and get a sense of just how much better the 20 billion parameter model is compared to the various T5 models and even the T5 11 billion parameter model. For me playing around with it, it's definitely noticeably better. Uh, and 
There are obviously many things though, that it still falls far short of the, the 540 billion parameter model, which we, we would not expect it to be able to do all those tasks, but it could be certainly used for a bunch of different tasks that you would like to do for things like fact extraction, named entity and recognition, a whole bunch of these things, sentiment and stuff like that, that you could play around with this model and probably get some very good results out of this. And don't forget, if you wanted to, you could also fine tune this model for your specific task as well. So very interesting model, definitely worth checking out. I'm going to make another video after this one of going through and using this model with Langchain. So I saw that they've also integrated this into their framework. And so I'll look at building something with it there where it's a little bit more practical. All right, until next time, thank you for watching. If this was useful, please subscribe so that you get updates about new videos that I'm releasing.